very wealthy city. Ephesus was known by its magnificent uh, harbors and uh, ship all over the world would come to Ephesus to bring the goods and the wealth. So it was a very wealthy city. Not only that it was a very wealthy city, it was also a very wicked city. A very wicked city. It was the home of the temple. If you will go back to the book of Acts, it is the temple of Diana. Have you heard of Diana? Diana in Ephesus is the goddess of sex and uh, fertility. And Diana was worshipped by having, because in the temple there are plenty, there are, uh, there are plenty of uh, temple prostitutes. That's how wicked the city is. Can you imagine? Na meron isang temple doon, and in that temple, napakaraming prostitutes in the temple. And the way that they would worship Diana is to have sexual relations with those um, temple prostitutes. So it is a very wicked place to live. And so when we read the book of Acts chapter 18, 19 to 21, and also part of chapter 20, we find that the Apostle Paul went to Ephesus for two years and preached the word of God in the city and he started the church. So kapag binasa natin yung Ephesians, that is the church in Ephesus. It was a wicked city, but through the preaching of the word of God, people were saved and their lives were transformed. You see, there is power in the word of God. Paul said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the what? It is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jews first and also to the Greeks. So this was an active church. The very active church. They were actively serving God in a wicked hour, and God used them, and many souls were saved in the city. Now, after many years, I was trying to study how long I, I read some more that it, uh, this was after 30 years. From the time it was started up to this point, the Lord Jesus Christ comes to this church, Minisita sila ulit ng Panginoon, to speak to them about where they are and what He wants them to be. So, nakikita na natin dito yung history of the church. It was started a long time ago and now in the book of Revelation chapter 2, Jesus visits the church and he speaks to them about who they are now and what he wants those Christians to be. I would like to highlight three things in your notes. Maybe you can bring home three words that starts with letter C. The first word, it's not in your notes, but it, it, it will be good if you can write these words in your notes. It's the word... Uh, commendation. The second word is the word uh, first is commendation, the second word is condemnation, and then the third word is correction. So this will serve as your guide as you think about every point. We have three things to discuss, and the first one has something to do with the commendation that the Lord Jesus Christ made. The second point has something to do about the condemnation that the Lord Jesus Christ um, expressed and also the third is about the correction that the Lord Jesus Christ uh, gave to this church. But in your notes, I want you to notice first of all that the reputation, uh, that the reputation examined. Okay, the reputation is examined. Look at verse number 2 and verse number 3. Jesus said, I know thy works and thy labor and thy patience and how thou canst not bear them which are evil and hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars verse 3 and hast born and hast patience and for my name's sake hast thou hast labored and hast not fainted and also in verse number 6, the Bible says here, But this thou hast, 
that thou hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans, which I also hate. Now in these verses, the Lord begins his remarks to this church by talking about all that is right, about the good things uh, with this congregation. Yun ang unang pinanggit ng Panginoon dito, yung mga ginawa nilang tama, yung mga, mga mabubuti sa church na ito, yung commendation ng Panginoon. We find here that Jesus commends, commends them for their service. For their service. There are three words in these verses. One is the word works. That speaks of, that means the church has, they have accomplished so much for the glory of God. These Christians were working. Nagtatrabaho sila. I mean, not a secular job, but they are working in the church. They accomplish something in the church. It's like many of you here today. Second is the word labor. They were actively serving the Lord uh, at great personal expense and sacrifice. They were sacrificing. They were laboring, they were, they were working, they were laboring. And we also uh, find the word patience. They continue to serve the Lord faithfully in spite of everything that is being thrown against them. If you live in a wicked city and you do what is right, you will be persecuted. Amen? Are you with me? Amen? People will hate you. People will hate you because if you live right, then you make them look very bad. Like Mark Twain who said, nothing bothers me more than a good example. If somebody is doing right and you are around them and you are doing things that are wrong, it will make you really bad. That's why they were being persecuted, but in spite of the persecution, they continued to serve the Lord faithfully. Now I believe if you visited this church, you would have heard about a week filled with activity and opportunities for service. Parang halimbawa ito. This is uh, the church in Ephesus. I believe if you come and visit the church, they are talking about the people they led to the Lord, the Bible studies they conducted, and all the things that they were doing for the Lord. See? And the Lord Jesus Christ commends them for their service. He also commends them for their separation. Uh, if you look at the Bible, the Bible says, I know thy words and thy labor and thy patience, and how thou canst not bear them which are what? Evil. Thou canst not bear them which are evil. Do you know the difference between evil and sin? Sin is when you do something that is wrong. Let's say you commit fornication. That is sin. Can we say amen to that? When you commit adultery, that is sin against God. When you steal, that is a sin against God. Evil, listen very well, Evil is when you help somebody do what is wrong. Halimbawa, if you are in the Philippines or in Kenya or in Africa, you may not be smoking but you are selling cigarettes. That is evil. You may not be drinking alcohol but you are selling alcohol, you are selling beer and whiskey. That is being evil. You may not be... Uh, Involved in cup fighting, but you are raising fighting cups. You are an evil person. You may not be committing adultery, but you tolerate, you allow somebody to commit adultery in your home or with your knowledge, you just let them do it. Okay? You are an evil person. Now, the Bible says here that this church in Ephesus, if you find, the Bible says that they cannot spare that which is evil. See, they live differently than the world around them. Iba yung buhay nila. Pag tinabi mo sila sa mga tao na say, you can very easily tell the difference between them and people that are not saved. And by the way, God still expects this from us. God demands that every believer, God demands that every Christian live a separated life from this world. Amen? Amen. God wants us to live a separated life. If you are saved, you should quit your smoking. Amen? Amen? Because you are saved. Your body is the temple of God. 
If you are saved, you have no business committing adultery and fornication. Why? Because your body is the temple of God. And the Bible says, if you defile the temple of God, which is your body, the Bible says, He shall get destroyed. God expects this from us. Look at your Bible in 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 17. We are in Qatar. You are away from home. And the temptation to do things that are foolish, to do things that are wicked, is, uh, is better than up here. That's why we need to be careful. That's why I preach very hard against this. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 17. Many churches will not stand and name sins. But if Jesus Christ is here, you will hear the Lord Jesus Christ stand in front of people and name the sins of the people. You know, Jesus Christ will not be welcome in many churches today. Because every time Jesus would preach, he would name the sin of people. He said, he told the Pharisees, he said, who are these scribes and uh, Pharisees? You are hypocrites. You generation of vipers. The Lord Jesus Christ used those words. And we feel like today, those words are not inappropriate to be used in the church. That's why many of the members are free to smoke their cigarettes, to drink their wine, their whiskey, to get involved in illicit sex, fornication, and adultery because it is never spoken from the pulpit. But if you will look at your television, the message is so loud. As long as we are in this church, as long as you are a part of this church, you will always hear messages about this. Amen. And the Apostle Paul said, Am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? Do you hate me because I'm telling you and trying to help you spiritually? Look at what the Apostle Paul said, 2 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse number 17. He said, Here, wherefore come out from among them. Do you hear that? Come out from among them, do not live with them. And be separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive them. Please read also in Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 1 to 8. We don't have time to read those verses, but please read those verses. I'm trying to tell you that if you are a child of God, God wants to God wants you to live a separated life. Amen. 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 He expects that from us. Somebody said, our talk talks. Have you heard that? And our walk talks. But our talk talks louder than our walk talks. Do you hear that? I think I missed it a little bit. Your talk talks and your walk talks. But your walk talks louder than your talk talks. Did I confuse you? <laughs> when you speak, you are sending a message. With the way you live your life, you are also sending a message. But the message you send by the way you live your life is louder than the message you are sending by talking. You say you love God, but in your life you allow sin. That's wrong. See? So, in our walk, in our talk, in the way we dress, especially you ladies. When you dress, you dress modestly. Amen? Amen. Amen. Do not expose parts of your body. Kung si Brother Ronald pa, sabi, hindi ba nyo yung mga lokal dito? Balot na balot. Yung mga Pilipina naman, balat na balat. <laughs> Why are you exposing some parts of your body? Your breast and your legs and so forth. Why don't you just wear clothing that are so that when men look at you, they will not think of lustful things. See? You are saved. You should understand that you are a child of God. And you, if you stand next to a person that is not saved, will they be able to tell the difference? See? See, he commends the separation. He also commends the standard. These people are, uh, these people are praised because they help pass to the correct doctrines. Every time they hear a preacher that would come and listen to that preacher, they would listen to him and at the same time they would look at the word of God whether what the preacher is saying is in accordance with the word of God. Amen. Our problem today is we want to be tickled, we want to go to church. Ah, it's exciting in this church and so, may kantahan dito, may sayo dito, subito kami, masaya dito. 
You are not in church so that you will enjoy church. You come to church so that you will be taught the word of God and you go out there and live the word of God. Yeah. Uh, I tried to make a little research on this. I think they are followers of Nicholas. Nicholas was preaching that it's okay. Uh, he made the doctrine out of this. That it's okay to serve God and be engaged in immoral things. And later on, if you will read in Revelation chapter 2 and verse number 15, the redeemed became a doctrine. Tignan yung verse of the So hast thou also them that hold the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, which, uh, which things I think. They practiced it and by and by they made a doctrine out of it. We do not do that. From the doctrine we form our deeds. Amen? Itong salita ng Panginoon, it regulates what we do. Okay? We do not formulate the doctrine. We already have the Word of God that teaches us. Amen? Amen. And then the Word of God should change our life. Some people do this, do this, do this, and then they change the Word of God to suit the practice. You cannot do that. You can do that if you want. But God will condemn you for that. So God commends them for their service and for their separation and for their standard and for their steadfastness. They labor to the point of exhaustion. Pagod na pagod na sila sa paglilipot sa Panginoon. They serve and they serve and they are tired. But they did so without being weary. That means they did not stop. Yesterday I was so tired. I have to think about the, our kids in the Philippines and their tuitions and all those things and I was just thinking and thinking and thinking and I have all these Bible studies in the industrial because some of our workers are not and then we do not drive, have a driver for alcohol and uh, uh, I was sleepy also because I drove somebody to the airport very early uh, yesterday morning and uh, I did not want to go and I, I drink a Red Bull and I I, I drink coffee, I violated my convictions, I don't drink coffee already. Okay, not that it is a sin, but I have to take a glass of coffee just to be able to drive those guys. And then I want to come back so I can review my lesson, but naligaw-ligaw pa kami, dumating pa kami ng Raslapan. <laughs> Kamali yung aming GPS. Okay, but I don't blame him, we had a good ride. Sometimes we serve and we become exhausted in serving God and we just give it up. But this church, they were very steadfast in what they did. And they did it for the Lord's sake. Isn't that a great church? Amen? How would we compare to the church in Ephesus? But secondly, I want you to say not only the reputation that was examined, but I want you to look very closely at the reality that is exposed. The reality that is exposed. Your reputation is what people think of you. In this second point, I'm talking about your character. This is who you really are. We are so concerned about our reputation, so we do this, we do this, we do this. That's what people think about us. But who people think we are could be different from who we really are. Amen? Amen. What's the term in Tagalog? You can pretend to be somebody you're not. Okay? So after offering this church some words of commendation, now the Lord gives them some words of condemnation. they look good because of those things that we were studying but inwardly are you listening? inwardly something is seriously wrong that must be dealt with para bang kawe it's like a wood ang ganda patignan furniture you have a furniture it looks good but in the inside there are already termites may anay na sa loob. Maganda patignan sa labas. 
pagdarasang termites in the inside that's destroying the wood unless it's taken care of. And the Lord is grieved by the problem He sees in His church. He sees a great church in the outside. They were serving, they were steadfast, and they were uh, they they live a separated life and all those things. But the Lord is grieved by the problem He sees in the church. You know what? The Lord sees not only what we do, He also sees what we are. The Lord is able to look beneath the surface of our lives and see the condition of our lives. I will look at you and say, you know, that guy, he's really a good guy. You know, I like that guy, he has a good heart. You know, I like that person, he serves the Lord. You know, I like that person, he's really very diligent. That's what I see on the outside. I do not see what is inside. You can do the same to me, the same thing to me. You know, that pastor, I really like him. He is this, he is this, he is this, he is this. Well, do you know what's inside here? You don't. But somebody else. Amen? Amen? Somebody does. We cannot hide anything from God. See? When you find sin in our hearts, it creeps you. And it hinders our ability to fellowship <laughs> with Him and to be blessed by Him. And when we allow those things, those wrong things to linger in our hearts, the Lord is clear. He looks down to this church, he said, I know thy works, your labor, your patience. I see it. But he said, I have someone against thee. I have someone against thee. He said, Thou hast left thy first love. I know what you're doing. I know what people see in you. But he said, I have something. I can say something that is seriously wrong in you. You have lost your first life. You don't love me like you used to love me. You know, they were active in the Lord's work. But they are they were serving out of a sense of duty. Nagsaserve sila, tungkulin na nila yun. It's my responsibility to do this kind of study, so I'll do it. Because if I do it, not do it, then nobody would, so I'll do it. But it becomes a duty instead of doing it out of love. See? Are we like that? You are serving as a people. You are singing. You do the things you do, it's all a duty. The love is come. And He commands us that we take time to do those things. But in His heart, He is grieving because He says that the love is gone. How would you feel if your spouse will say to you, you know, I don't love you as I used to. How would you feel? Are you going to ask if your husband will say to you, he will come home one afternoon, maybe leave a note or send you a message, or he will say, you know, will that not break your heart? Then sure you will. And how much do you think the Lord is broken hearted when we see, when He looks at the real Baptist church? And He sees the things we do. You know, you know, you that are serving the Lord. But the God looks straight at that heart. And He sees that the most important thing, the only thing He longs to see in the heart, is no longer there. Don't you think 
to break this up. But we have love for the Lord Jesus Christ should be at the bottom of everything we do. I have to remind myself of this. Yes, I have to preach that. It's possible for me just to preach because I'm a pastor of the church. Who will preach? But you know what? I can preach to you with no love in my heart. And I cannot expect Him to bless me. I can teach by just studying lessons. You can take many lessons from one or two of But the love is no longer there. You can advise people just, just for the sake of advising because you are the pastor, but the love is no longer there. So I have to remind myself. Don't be like the church of Jesus. They will serve you. But it's nothing but a truth. And then I want you to consider the third. First, the reputation was exactly all the other good reputation. People think great about this church. What? What a great church. They do this, they do this, they do this. Wow, what a great church. But Jesus said, I have someone against me. Now, uh, if you look at verse number 5, the Lord said something in verse number 5. Remember therefore from whence thou art fallen, and repent, and do the first works. Or else I will come unto thee quickly and will remove thy candlestick out of this place. Thank you so much, brother. Thank you. The Lord has not come to hurt them. Hindi naman sila binisita ng Panginoon para sa tayo. Jesus Christ came to help them. You know what's painful in the ministry sometimes? You the people whom you love, you devote your life for them, pray for them and help them. They misunderstand what you're doing. Instead of simply saying thank you, they would even put a bit of this in their heart. I guess that's a price to pay. You are serving the Lord. But the Lord calls on them. Sabi ng Panginoon, I want you to remember. Church is saying, remember this is a personal letter to the church in Ephesus. He said, dear church, remember. He said, look back at the moment when, when you first came to know me. He wants them to recall the excitement, the emotion, the fervency that was in their heart. When they first received the Lord, di ba nung natanggap yung Panginoon, napaka-excited, you are so excited, you finally have the answer. That you don't have the answer, you don't know whether you go to a heaven or hell and you just do good works and you think by doing more works than bad things that hopefully you can go to heaven. But one day, from the word of God, it was made clear to you that although you are a sinner on your way to hell, but you can know for sure that you will go to heaven. By simply trusting Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And you receive Him and oh, how excited you were in serving God. The Lord Jesus said, remember. And after saying remember, He said, repent. Repent. The Lord called them to repent of the sin of not loving Him. Kasalanan pala yung hindi mo mamahalin ng Panginoon nang nararapat. Not to love God as you should is a sin. That's why Jesus said, repent. And you know, the same counsel needs to be heeded by the modern church. Yan ang dapat nating marinig kayo. Galean Baptist Church or anybody who is here, if you are a Christian, but you have lost your first love, Jesus is saying to you, repent. We have an old family. We have an old fun. We have an old work. 
and even church work to take place now in our hearts. We need to repent of our coldness. And then what did he say? Repent. He said, remember. And then he said, repent. And then he said, do the first work. What was he saying? Repeat. Do those things you used to do before. Remember you used to read your Bible? Go back to reading your Bible. Go back to prayer. Do you remember when I first arrived here and we have Bible studies every Tuesday and uh, we have a series of one year we studied about the end time events and all how excited everybody was. Go back to Bible reading. Go back to singing. Go back to praying. Go back to teaching. Go back to the Word of God. Do those first words. Go back to testifying and witnessing. When was the last time you want a song? Go back to giving. Go back to serving. Do the first words. And the Lord said something. This is a warning here. Take the note down. In verse number 5. He said, or else. Magsisilay. At kapag hindi, you have your choice. I'm just here as a messenger of God to deliver to you the message of God. God said, repent, so I'm telling you, repent. But if it's up to you, He said, or else, or else what? I will, He didn't say, I might. He said, I will come unto thee quick. And we will remove the candlesticks out of this place, except thou repent. The Lord tells them that He will extinguish their candle if they refuse to get where they need to be. Kung hindi mo, hindi ka babalik. Panatilin mong malamit ka, you are called to the Lord. You will allow yourself to remain in that state of losing your first love, he said, I will remove the candlestick. And you know what? That is just what did happen in Sayakesus. They, they failed to hear the message of God, and God took away their life. Now there is no great Christian work in that city. Why? Tinupat ng Panginoon yung sinabi niya. I brought you an object lesson. Do you see this ball? When I got back from the Philippines, I turned on this switch. Hindi na humilaw ito. Kung meron ba yung ilaw sa bahay na hindi na talaga, talagang alam mo hindi na talaga iilaw yun. Do you still keep this in your cabinet? Huh? You know it's not working. What's the use of having it around? You throw this in the trash, right? That is the message of the Lord. He's saying, you better repent. Otherwise, I will extinguish you. Folks, that is one thing I fear will happen to me, they say. If we stop winning souls, if we stop supporting mission work, why is there a need for this church to exist? In your work, did you know God placed you there for a purpose? To be aligned to your office needs? Do not be surprised if one day you have no more job. Nilagay ka ng Panginoon sa may purpose kung bakit? Just to make money? No! God placed you there for a purpose. He wants a light. And you are that light. And if you are not shining, you are like this light bulb. What is the use of you staying in the tower? But if you would just shine brightly for the Lord. I know Qatar is a dangerous place. 
John was picked up by the police last week on Friday morning and he stayed in the prison until Monday. I envy you, brother. That happened to you for serving the Lord. Your life is wrong. He said, repent. We don't have time. I want you to be honest with yourself and with the Lord. Have you left your first life? You are doing right. You are doing four things for the Lord. And those things are commendable. But what I want to know this morning is this. More than what you are doing in the outside, let me just hear. What is really happening to the inside of your heart? Are you still doing those things because you love Him? My friend, if you have lost your first love, this is the place. Now is the time. This is a good remember, repent, and do those first words. Loving Father, we thank you for the message you gave us. Bless the invitation. In Jesus' name. Bow your head, close your eyes, please. No one looking around. The Lord's letter to the church in Ephesus. Why did this letter need to be written? Why does it need to be included in the Bible? The reason is plain. It is for us to learn. Because what is happening in Ephesus? almost 2,000 years ago is happening in many churches today. They lost their first love and many of you, since you came from Kenya, since you came from the Philippines, some things has taken place in your heart and your love for the Lord Jesus Christ has been released. When every head are bowed and eyes are closed, no one looking around, who will say this morning, Pastor, Please pray for me. God spoke to my heart. Can you raise your hand? Let me just say, God bless me with you. So many of you. God bless you. It's good that you are honest. You may put your hands down. Some of you are not raising your hand. Maybe you still are deeply in love with the Savior, and that's good. But you are the only one of the Lord who knows that. If you know your heart is cold, if you know you have lost your first love, but you will not respond, listen to what Jesus said, or else I will come quickly. This might be the week you will receive that visit from the Word. And he will tell you, I told you last Friday, but you won't listen. I don't want that to happen to you. Let's fall in love with the Lord Jesus Christ again. The emotions should be in our heart. You come to the altar today. We pray, and then we will stand, but the chamber will play the piano. I invite you to come. Father, thank you for those hands that are raised. Bless the invitation. In Jesus' name. So you all stand. The piano is playing on you. Did you put us at us? Did you put us at us? All the way up to the altar here, so that others will have a good time. You come, not to show others, you come to make a very important decision. You come to make a decision to love the person that you're going to marry. You come to make a decision to love You come to make a decision to love the person who desires you to love him with all your heart, your soul. Would you come today? Kung masigit na tayo, if it is very, if we don't have enough space, just come to the aisle. Just get out of your seat. One steps, two steps, the word system, nakikita ng panito. Kung ka. Huwag niyo mahayaan na mamigil yung pagmamahal sa Panginoon. 
nadidisappoint ng Panginoon siya. At kapag nadisappoint ng Panginoon, wala na sa karapatan. Kinunan mo ng karapatan ng Panginoon para pag pagpalain ka. You can do that. Let's be a church who loves the Lord. Habang nandito tayo, katulad mong kinanta ng poem that it asks for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Why? They are serving because they love the Lord. Ganon din dapat ang bawat member ng mga Lord. Is there a sin in your heart today? That needs to be confessed. Are you an evil person? Others are sinning because of you? May nagkakasala? Ikaw yung kasangkapan ni Satanas? Naging empleyado ka ni Satanas? Para gumawa ng kasalanan ng iba? Oh, how much God hates me this year. You come today and get ready before the Lord. We have one more verse and then we will close. Just one more verse. One more verse.